Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we got a full width image grid for you today. We've got some images here. We've got a big background image. We've got some blurb modules with icon and title there. When we hover over, we've got another little image that pops up. That's a really eye-catching feature to have on your site. And of course, you can link these things to wherever you want to. I just got my link link into this section down below. Really easy to do, so let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. And once enabled, let's go down. I'll just show you, this is fully responsive. If I hit the little purple button, and we go to Tablet View. We've kept three columns on Tablet, and on Phone View, it's going to collapse and stack on top of each other. And we got a different background image in there, which is a bit longer. Okay, well, let's get started. I'm going to go back to desktop. I want to go down. Let's add a new section where we want to work. Little blue button. I want to use a regular section. Before I put any rows in this section, let's just get rid of that. And we'll delete this top one here. So we don't get confused. Okay. Well, in my section here, blue tab, I'm going to add a row. Green tab for row. I'm going to add three columns to mine. Obviously, add as many or as few as you want in yours. And in my first column, we're going to use the fantastic blurb module. We've been doing a lot with blurbs lately. Boom. Let's move this over a little bit closer. Obviously, put your title of what you want to say in there. And down below, I'm just going to have mine say read more or learn more. Put a couple of arrows down there. You can't see it actually because it's white on white. It is actually there though. We'll change that in a moment. Okay, image and icon. I want to use an icon for mine. So I'm going to flip the little switch to on. I'm going to look perhaps for a computer. And yeah, we'll pop that in there. There's the little icon. Let's style this a little bit. I'm going to go over to design, image and icon. I'm going to make my image and my title a sort of light blue color. So here's the icon color. I'm going to hit the little three dots to get the color grid up. We use this blue right there. I want it a little bit smaller. Let's make it sort of 50 pixels or something like that. Obviously, this is entirely up to you. Let's go to our text down below, website design. We roll on down. We've got text here. That will do both of them at the same time, the heading and the body text. I'm going to pop those in the middle. But my actual heading text, I'm going to hit the little brush. It'll take us straight to the design. I'm going to use the same blue on that. And let's perhaps make it semi-bold. I'm leaving it on the default font. Divi has got a ridiculous amount of fonts. To audition one, just click on here. Roll over it. It'll show you an example of that one. Okay, and my read more text, I'm going to leave that white just as it is and the same size as it is. Okay, if you want to link this module to somewhere, we need to go back to the content tab and just below image and icon, you'll find a little link right here. If you want to link the title to one place, you can put a link in there. If you want the whole module to link somewhere, you'll want to put a link in here. Let's perhaps link it to the section below here. I just save that. When we go to the blue tab, the section below. I've given this a CSS ID over in advanced of gal for gallery. So we'll link it to there. I'm going to copy that. We'll go back into our module up here, our little blurb module, back to the link and the content at the front. And for the whole module, I'm going to link it to that little section. Because it's a CSS ID, we need to put a hashtag in front, then the name. Great. Well, still under content, I'm going to go into background here now. I'm going to put a black background in, but I'm going to take the opacity almost all the way down. The only reason I'm putting this in is so when we put an image behind, it'll act as a bit of a dark overlay. So we'll be able to read everything correctly. Great. Well, I think that's going to work. It's giving it a little padding top and bottom, make it a reasonable size. So to do that, I'm going to go over to design. I'm going to go down to spacing. I'm going to use a percentage for top and bottom. So I'm going to use, say, 20%, 20 and the percent after it. 
And let's add that to the bottom as well by hitting the chain there. I think that's going to work for me. Let's just populate the rest of this row. What I'm going to do is copy this module. But before I do that, we want to put an image in the background when we hover over it. So to create that hover effect, so we want no image while we're looking at it. And then when we put the mouse on it, we're going to have an image back there. If we go back to content, back to our background where we put that color in, this is common to all Divi modules. If you hover up over the dark writing, you'll see some little icons appear. If there's a little arrow there, there is in our case, we can set a hover state and a desktop state. Desktop state obviously is when the mouse is not on it. When we put the mouse on it though, we can have completely different values. So click the little arrow on the hover state there. I'm going to go to image. We've got color, gradient, image, video, background pattern or background mask there. Just going to use an image and I click add background image and let's throw in an image. Now remember, we've only got that image in there when we're hovering. Now we put a little color in there, remember? That's just slightly too bright. The image in the background is just slightly too bright and it's taking away from our writing on top there. So to counter that, what we can do is still on the image is roll down a bit and you'll find image blend. I'm going to change that from normal to multiply and it multiplies it with that color that we've got going on back there, that, that gray, if you will, or the black with the low opacity. And that makes it a lot easier to read. And that really works for me. So on desktop, you're not going to see that at all. Fantastic. Well, let's populate this row now and we'll double it. We'll make it full width and put a big image in the background. So I'm pretty happy with that now for the rest of my designs. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to duplicate it, go into the module, the dark tab, hit the two squares to duplicate, drag whichever one over, and they're both identical so it doesn't matter, and we'll duplicate again, same thing. Okay, firstly, I don't want to have any gap between these. So to take care of that, I'm going to go into the row, the green tab for the row, I'm going to go over to design, sizing, Oh, we've got custom gutter width here. We flip this to on. When I take this all the way down to zero, there'll be no gaps between those. So they'll be just like that. Fantastic. Well, that works for me, but I kind of want to see some little separation between all these modules. So let's go into this first one here and we'll put a little border on there. I'm going to go in there, over to design. Just move this across a bit so you'll see when the border comes in. Going to go down to border. Don't want it to have rounded corners. I want to have a border on all four sides. You can do top, right, bottom, and left separately if you want. I'm going to make mine one pixel. You see it's come in there as one pixel. Default's black. I'm going to make it white. But I'm going to fade it down a bit because I want it to be there but not in your face. So I'm going to click on the color. Roll up a bit. And we've got the variegated slider again. So I can bring that opacity probably down to about 25%, something like that. It's still there, and we're going to have two buffered up against each other when I put them on these other modules here, so you will be able to see it. So we've got that nice little border in there, there now, and rather than having to do that to these other two, I can just right-click on our module here, extend blurb styles. They're all identical anyway, apart from that border. I'm going to extend it to the rest of this row. Just hit the extend. So let's make this row full width now. To do that, we'll go back into the row itself, the green tab. Back over to design. I'm going to go back into sizing again. To make this full width, go down to width down here. Slide it up to 100%. Copy the 100% control C and paste it down below in the max width. Control V to paste, or you can just type it in there if you want. We've now got that full width, which is just what I wanted. So let's save that. Let's just duplicate it so we've got six of them. So I'm going to go up in the row this time and hit duplicate. And we've got a bit too much space there between the two. So let's undo that. I'm going to hit Control Z. It'll take it back. And let's go into the row again and take away any padding there so they're touching each other. Over to Design, Spacing, Padding Top and Bottom. 
going to put a zero in the first one there. Hit the chain. That'll take all the padding away from the row there. Now we can safely duplicate it and have them touching. Fantastic. Got a little bit of space at the top there in the section. We want to get rid of that too. So we'll do exactly the same thing to it. We we'll go into the blue section, design, spacing. I'm going to put a zero in there. And I'm going to hit the chain so it does the bottom two. And it's buffered up against that next section below there. Fantastic. That's okay. Not particularly interesting though. So let's put a big image behind all of this. To do that, I guess I could have stayed in the section. We were in it already under content, background. Go to image, background image. And I'll use that same one as I used before. Great. Well, that looks a bit more interesting. Now, of course, we need to go in here because they're all the same and change these to different things. So let's go into my next one here. Obviously, you want to change your title. We'll change the icon. So it's shot. And you want to change the link. I'm going to leave mine just the same where it actually links to. But of course, we're going to want to put a different background image there on hover. So to do that, go into the background. Remember to get your hover state up. Go over to the image itself. Click on it. And we can put a different little image in there. When you're happy, go ahead and save that. Now I'll pause this video and I'll do the rest of these. Okay, well, I've just finished my last one there. So we've got different titles, links, and background images in each of these now. Let's take a look at it on tablet. So expand your little purple button. If you haven't got it expanded, hit the tablet. I mean, that's okay. But I'd like to see it side by side on tablet. So we can leave it in tablet mode. And what I'll do is I'll go back up to the top of this section. Once back at the top, we can go into our row, the green tab. Make sure you do it in the green tab, not the blue tab. Blue tabs for section, green for the row. Once over to advanced, we go down to custom CSS. Roll over the main dark writing in there. This is common to all DB modules. If there's a little mobile phone icon, we can click on it. Just make sure you're on tablet view. Once in tablet view, I'm going to write display, colon, and the word flex, F-L-E-X, semicolon. As you can see, let's just copy that display flex now. That row's now got three columns in it. And if we do the same to the row underneath, it'll do the same thing. So I'm just going to go into there. Advanced. Custom CSS, I'm going to paste that in the main element again. And we got our three little rows. Now that's great, but let's have a look at on mobile. I don't think there's going to be enough room on mobile to fit all those in. Yeah, I mean, it does fit, but that's entirely up to you. You could take down that text size a little bit on mobile if you wanted to. But for me, I'd rather have it stacking. So they're on top of each other on mobile there. Because there's a few little gaps and things where it's squashing it all up. So to do that, exactly the same thing. And remember, we're on the second row we're in at the moment, still in there. Let's do that again. We'll hit the little phone icon. Let's make sure we're on phone there. I'm going to write a different bit of code. I'm going to say display colon and the word block, B-L-O-C-K, semicolon. As you can see, those are now stacking on top of each other, which works for me. So I'm going to copy that, Control C, I'm going to save. I'm going to go into the row on top and do exactly the same thing. Over to Advanced, Custom CSS, make sure we're on the mobile in the main element. I'll paste that in there. Now we've got them stacking. Now, like I say, you could put a different image in there, perhaps one that's longer and skinnier if you wanted to make it more effective. To easily do that, let's just say what we've got going on here. We're going to go into the section this time, the blue tab. Down to background. Remember, we put an image in the background with this. Again, what we want to do is roll over the little phone icon. Make sure that we're on mobile and we can have a completely different image for mobile. So let's click on that. 
and I've got a long skinny image that we can put in for mobile. So we'll have that on mobile. That works fine. If we flip to tablet, we've got our three columns. And of course on desktop, we've got three columns also. So if we've done everything correctly, this should all work for us now. Let's save the changes here. We'll save the page changes. And let's exit the Visual Builder. And there we have it. If we roll down, an image is going to appear when we roll over these. That's a great little feature to have on your site. And like I say, we can link them anywhere you want, either to different sections or off-site, wherever you want to take your people. So there you go, guys. There's how to create a full-width image grid with icon and link. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignertechtips.com. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little video like this one. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. Day.